Hello movie lovers. Today I want to talk a little bit about a Japanese movie from 1986, To Sleep So As to Dream, directed by Keizo Hayashi. Recently released by uh, Arrow Video. And it give you it gives you they they give you a, a reversible art and I kind of like the uh, Japanese uh, reversible art cover so I put that on the uh, on the physical release and um, and this is a really unusual adventurous film and um, it it uh, Arrow really gives it the the full treatment of what what I think the movie really deserves so if you were if you ever had to dream of being a film director, but to make a film, uh, but you didn't go to film school uh, and uh, you didn't work in the film industry. Uh, this is a this is a movie that might inspire you to make a film, and in, and this was filmed on 16 millimeter uh, film uh, at a very very low budget. Um, I guess you could do the same today with digital cameras. You could just make a film with your friends. Um, and and uh, it, it's, it was an unusual film that uh, uh, Hayashi had written a script and it was sort of in gestation for about 10 years, he said. He's only 27 when he makes this film. But it's a black and white film. That's one big strike against it in the world of uh, releasing films. And it's also a silent film. So everybody told him, are you crazy? <laughs> Black and white silent film, this is 1986. <laughs> um, so, uh, but he persisted and he had a producer in the beginning, but then he fell out and then he decided to produce the, movie, produce the movie himself and raise the money. He did have a producer who I, th this, I think this may have been his debut movie as well, who went on to great success in Japanese films, as did Hayashi. And he's still making films. Um, and um, so, but he, miraculously enough, uh, he, he attracted in the, in the, in the uh, supporting cast, he, he, he attracted famous actors and actresses from the past um, uh, although his lead actor um, uh, is making his debut film as well. Um, so we get, uh, like I say, Arrow gives, it, uh, Arrow gives this a, a great treatment. Uh, we get two commentaries, we get interviews, uh, we learn all about Benji, which is the narration of silent films. But this film is a, is a detective story. and. Uh, and Hayashi loved detective movies. He went on to make a lot of detective movies, including a kind of ripoff of Mike Hammer. I, I think it was Mike Ahama, something like that. Uh, I think he made three films like that. And I, I believe um, Alex Cox directed some of the TV. It became a TV series. And I think Alex Cox uh, directed uh, some of that. And um, uh, so, it's it's set in a kind of indeterminate time, so we're we're it's about silent filmmaking, but we could be in the thirties, the forties, the fifties, the sixties, as far as the clothing, cars, um, so and 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 that gives it a, that gives the film a real sense of timelessness. Is is I think uh, Shiro Sano, who was the lead actor, says. In uh, a current interview, a brand new interview, he says that the film seems as new to him today as it as it did in 1986. There's nothing like this film. <laughs> You're never going to see anything quite like this film. So we have a kidnapping case, a PI, and his ra uh, rather amusing um, sidekick detective uh, get this case. Uh, a strange-looking old man comes and says that uh, his clients. Uh, uh, daughter has been kidnapped and here's the money, here's the ransom money, you go and save her. But the film, even though it's a detective movie, it has a very playful ambiance to it. Uh, so one of the comic mo motifs is of hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> the, the, the detective is constantly eating hard-boiled eggs and it's certainly a nod to the hard-boiled detective fiction. <laughs> um, and um, and also with with the silent 
uh, uh, there's no dialogue in the beginning of the film. There's no film score at all, but we hear ambient noises. So we hear uh, car horns. We do get some dialogue um, when a tape is played, but, the, but none of the actors ever have dialogue with each other. And, uh, and so it's a tribute to silent films. The whole uh, plot of the film is set in motion by a, a, a very old silent actress um, who has hired, who has set in motion this, this detective plot that these two detectives get caught up in. They really don't understand <laughs> exactly what's going on in, the, in, the, in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, crime that they're investigating. So it's a tribute to silent films, to German expressionism, um, but it's very, very much a surrealistic film. It's, uh, it, it just, it, it has just a, a kind of delightful, uh, ill logic to it, uh, to, a, a dreamlike feel to it. And it got me wondering, how do we dream? Do we dream in black and white or do we dream in color? I, when I woke up this morning, I was trying, was that in color or was that in black and white, that last dream I had? Um, so, this is, in being in black and white, uh, there was very few technicians in the late 80s who had actually worked in black and white. So the cinematographer, who also goes on to have a very successful career, this was the first time he was working in black and white. But uh, I don't know how Hayashi did it with these big name stars, even though they weren't you know, stars that we would know, but they were big names in Japanese cinema. He was able to get, as his art director, Takeo Kimura. He was an old man in, in the late 80s, but he had worked in, in many, many um, uh, classic film, Japanese films from the 50s and, and 60s. And he really gives this film a look. I mean, it is just so beautifully, I mean, there's information they, they, they used. They, had a, they didn't have money to build sets. They had to go to real um, locations and many of these locations as we learn in the supplements are gone uh, some of them were famous locations historically speaking and he really uh, and when you hear in the, in the in the credits he gets a huge amount of credit for the film and in the supplements we get the director saying you know if this was, <laughs> if this film would never have looked the way it looks with this art director and they it, when they had locations and they had trouble in the locations, power lines, things that looked good at night, when they got there in the day, you know, it was power lines, houses in the distance, he would improvise. He said, let's shoot here, let's shoot over here. And using everything, uh, even it, it, he even was able to borrow out of props from his previous movie. This, this film only had something like a $50,000 uh, budget to it. So it was super low budget. And um, and then uh, it took, in, in talking about homemade, uh, in, the, uh, in the commentary, one of the commentaries, uh, uh, the, uh, Hayashi said when the film was finished, he, he, it was a 16 millimeter film, uh, he took it home to his very small apartment, he just cut and pasted the movie together. <laughs> and uh, then he couldn't get it released for a year, it took him a, a year to finally get a release. Of the movie, and they basically they they were only able to shoot. He had so so such a small amount of film that uh, he they could only shoot exactly what was going to be in the film, and uh, there was there wasn't time for multiple takes. I think he said there was only a couple scenes where they did more than one take. So, but it all ends happily because <laughs> after the struggle to make the film. Uh, to, uh, to, to finally get a release, it was a big hit. Uh, it, uh, and it played in festivals all around the world, New York Film Festival, Venice Film Festival. Um, it was something completely unique, completely d different. Uh, and um, so in the, in the supplements, like I say, we get two commentaries. One is with Tom Mace and Jasper sharp and they are absolutely <laughs> i mean they know japanese cinema like you won't believe they, they have so many so much information and context as far as hayashi's career the career of the different actors in the in the film 
Um, and then the other commentary is with, um, is with uh, uh, Shiro Sano and the lead actor in Hayashi. And I, was, I wasn't gonna listen to all that, but I got caught up with it right away because it was such a, a miracle, you know, and they, they, they both of them said if this film had never got released, they probably would have gone back to, uh, you know, their hometowns and their, all dream, their dreams would have to, have to be given up of being a film director or a film actor. So uh, it, it um, and, and then the interview, the uh, commentary with the director and stars from 2000, so they're looking back in, in about 15 years after they uh, actually made the film, but then there's an interview, a, a new interview from 2021 with uh, Shiro Sano, um, uh, and uh, that's very good because, you know, you get that same sense of, of how it was, what, what a miracle. I use, I'll use the word again, a miracle was to get this film made. And then we get, um, we also get a, and this is really interesting because we, throughout the film, we see bits of this, of, a, of an actual silent film, although it was directed, you know, uh, by Hayashi himself, but it looks like a silent film. And we get that uh, throughout the movie, but in silent film days uh, in Japan, you had a Benchy who was, uh, or Banshee, I think it's called, he, he would narrate the film. So if you went to see a silent film, he you would have a narrator at the side of the screen telling you the story, and you would also have a small group of, uh, a small orchestra group, six or seven, and, and they would alternate between the music and the narration, and these narrations and because there was no Japanese, in the early days, there was no Japanese silent film, so they were coming from other countries and uh, there had to be a, like an interpreter <laughs> to interpret the stories. And they would be very creative. And a, in the film, we see a, a portion in, the, in, the, in, in To Sleep So As To Dream, we see a portion of this silent, this Urzat silent film with a real life, <laughs> narrator of, of the films going back to Silent Days who was still around in 1986 giving his narration it's really entertaining and in the supplements we get his protege the only person who studied under him there was no interest in this Banshee uh, uh, style but he wanted it to go on and, uh, and so this uh, in the supplements the, a woman who is actually an actress she, she was in the film just briefly in To Sleep As To Dream, and she was so taken with this, this style of film. Uh, and, uh, and he was still traveling around in, in the 1980s, he was still traveling around because this was, you know, a kind of retro, you know, nostalgic kind of thing. So he would draw big crowds, but he had no successors. So she, she um, uh, studies under him and she's interviewed in one of the supplements and it's just it, it's if you like the history of cinema <laughs> it's just it's just a uh, a great supplement uh, and then we get a booklet and it's got a lot of terrific as your lead actor she wrote Sano and um, it's got a, uh, a really good essay as always these essays and these booklets are absolutely superb and we also get a 2021 a uh, short statement from, from the director himself, which is really, uh, really good. And, and, and the, um, the, the, the look of the film is fantastic. I mean, it's just, and if you're, you're scared of silent movies, I, mean, I can't, I must admit, I'm not the biggest non-comedy silent film fan. You can understand everything. And that you're, you, it has in your titles, and, they're, and they, they are uh, subtitled. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you get the gist of the story just by the visual storytelling. So another, another uh, this is uh, my last seven movies that I have talked about. Four of them by, by directors I've never seen a film before. And I love that. You know, I, I envy the people, younger people who are, you know, going for all the big canon titles and that are in UHD and all that. Uh, that's great. If I was younger, I'd be doing it too, but uh, there's another side to cinema, and this is the side that's often getting overlooked, and now we are getting um, the opportunity to, uh, to experience some of the cinema that isn't 
necessarily in the canon, but in some ways is just as interesting. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen to me. I do appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.